everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. We're about two weeks away from the games actually counting, and that's got baseball card investors wondering which players are going to have great seasons and which players' cards' values are going to go up because of those great seasons. Well, I've done a little bit of stats based research where I believe I have identified five players that are going to have great 2021 seasons and would make good investments for any baseball card collector. So buckle up. I'm going to give you my five players that I would invest in before the start of the 2021 baseball season. So the baseball card community is getting super pumped because baseball is about two weeks away from starting. Looks like we're going to get a full season of games in, which is fantastic. And I have spent the time and done some research based upon stats, not speculation. And I believe I have found five players that you can target for the 2021 baseball card season that these players will have good if not great seasons and their card values will be affected positively because of those seasons and not only that i believe i have found three cards for each of these players for any budget that any card investor should be looking at if you're interested in getting into these players so how did i develop this list well first of all I did not include any rookies on the list. Every one of these players has at least two years of baseball experience or more. Secondly, every one of the players has a risk value associated with it based upon the risk that you are assuming if you were to invest in these cards. So a one is low, a five is high. What is the risk factor uh, based on? Well, it would be player's age. It's going to be the current values of the card. Are they undervalued? Are they where they should be? Are they maybe overvalued a little bit? And it also takes into account the prior health of the player. And most importantly, the likelihood of sustained success, not just this season, but two, three, four, five years down the road. Also, Every one of my picks will have a significant stat or relevant proof point to back up why I'm making this pick. I do not like to live in the world of speculation and short-term investing. If you are investing in cards, I think it's very important to understand that investing for the long term and building a portfolio just like you would in the actual stock market is a much better strategy than day trading so you can't be living in speculation all the time you have to follow the stats card values will go up and down ultimately because of a player's performance on the field and finally i have picked three cards for each player there's a budget card which will fit into anyone's budget there's a mid-range card and a high range for some of you more serious and deep pocketed investors that watch the channel so all of the price ranges that i will give you for each one of these ranges are all based on recent ebay sales within the last week or two so before I go any farther, I also do want to let you know that my, the picks are based on my own research and I cannot guarantee that all these cards are going to go up. Things like injuries happen and I like to throw that out there because I don't like to be someone that just says investing cards forever, they're going to go up. That it, An investment is a risk just like any other risk. You need to know what that risk is going in and measure that and assume an amount of risk that you are comfortable with. So before we begin with our five players, be sure to throw me a thumbs up. If you like the investing videos, if you like the set guides and reviews, give me a thumbs up. That is the best thing you can do to support the channel. And be sure to subscribe because we put investing videos out. We put set guides and reviews. We do live breaks. If you wanna be part of all that, best thing you can do is subscribe. And if you wanna be the first, to see all of the latest one cent sports cards videos be sure to hit that bell notification so let's get into our first player first player gonna be mr jeff mcneil he's on the mets mainly a second baseman but can play all over the field for the mets and i'm gonna give you three reasons to believe why he's gonna have a great 2021 season first of all he has led 
the major leagues in batting average since he came into the league. His batting average since 2018, it is a robust 319, better than any other player in the league. You can name that player, a Tim Anderson, Fernando Tatis. It is Jeff McNeil that has the highest batting average of them all. And I believe because he is projected to hit in the two hole in front of Francisco Lindor this year, who was just added to the Mets, that he's going to see even more opportunities and more good pitches to hit in that two hole with Frankie Lindor behind him. So I believe that that average could even go up, being that he will be seeing plenty of more good pitches to hit. On top of that, he is an improving high contact hitter. He only had 24 strikeouts and 183 at bats in 2020, which comes down out to a 13.1% strikeout ratio. And that is actually down from 75 strikeouts and 510 at bats in 2019. So he went from Almost 15% all the way down to 13% as he has been in the league now since 2018. See him more at bats. He's maturing as a hitter. He is a high contact hitter, does not strike out that much, especially in today's game. So Jeff McNeil, a fantastic buy low candidate. My risk level for him is 3.5. Why is it as high as 3.5? Well, he's a little bit older. And I do think when you're investing, you have to look at a Hall of Fame trajectory. And I do not believe that Jeff McNeil's stats actually put him on a Hall of Fame trajectory. Do I see him being a fantastic player for the next 8, 10 to 12 years for the Mets or any other team? Of course. Do I see him being a player that gets Hall of Fame consideration? I actually do. But you may want to consider that going in. So what are the chase cards for Jeff McNeil? Well, first for the budget card, we're looking at the 2014 Bowman Chrome card number 150. That card right now you can get on eBay for around $8 to $12 raw, a very inexpensive card. It is a Bowman first card. It is a Bowman Chrome first. Obviously, you can look for the parallels and whatnot, and those will be a little bit more expensive. Then my mid-level card is going to be the 2019 Topps Chrome Rookie Card Auto, card number RJJM. And if you are looking to get that card on eBay, raw, you're going to get it anywhere between $20 and $35. But if you want to get a graded one, you can look at PSA. PSA 9s are going for around $40 to $50, some maybe a little bit more. And then you've got the PSA 10, which is what everyone really wants to chase, especially with those rookie autos. Right now, you're looking anywhere between about $75 to $130. That's kind of the range that it has been in lately. And if you're looking, for a high range card we're going to go back to the bowman chrome 2014 but this time we're looking at the auto raw on that card about 40 to 60 bucks in a psa 9 you're looking at about 55 to 75 if you can find one still for 55 you're doing real good and then your psa is going to be up at around 90 dollars to around 140 dollars it's kind of been in that range obviously you want to be looking for auctions not buy it nows If you are looking at the buy it nows, make sure that you are offering up on the or best offers. So that's Jeff McNeil. But who is going to be our second pick? The second pick, kind of not a surprise here, but the highly touted 2019 rookie, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. obviously plays for the Blue Jays, going to be playing mostly first base this year, but you'll see him dabble in third base. But here's our three reasons to believe on Vlad. First of all, One of the most obvious things that's been talked about all offseason, he has come into the 2021 season in much better shape than he was last year. The picture that I actually have on screen, that is a picture that he posted on his Instagram a little over a week ago. Just in much better shape. He is 42 pounds lighter, according to the media, than he was last year. Last year, he had a little bit of a down year, but... That maybe was a little bit deceiving because he did place in the top 7% of the league in exit velocity and hard hit rate in that should actually say 2020, not 2021. So he hit the ball hard. His hard hit rate is a very good hard hit rate. All of those are indicators of success. You're talking doubles that brings up your slugging percentage, your OPS numbers. So Even though his numbers were down by what a lot of people thought that they were going to be last year, he did hit the ball well 
maybe just didn't get lucky with some of those hits. And the other thing, just like Jeff McNeil, he is also a high contact hitter. He's only 22 years old. And I think a lot of people forget that because he's been around for a couple of years, but he came in extremely young. In the 183 career games that he has had, he's only struck out 129 times. So you're talking about a guy that sees the ball well, knows how to make contact, has that hard hit rate, has a very good exit velocity. And I think in this year, which will be his or his 22 and 23 year old uh, season, I think you're going to see the bat and everything finally come together for the young budding superstar Vladimir Guerrero Jr. My risk factor here going to be a 2.5 out of five. The only risk factor I really see with Vlad is one injuries, and of course he does need to stay in shape. Stay away from the buffets, Vlad. That's kind of what the card collecting community might tell you. So what are the cards we're going to be chasing for Vlad? My first one for the budget collectors is going to be the 2019 Tops Finest card number 101. You can get that card raw for about $7 to $12. That card, a little bit more rare than you're going to find on some of the flagship ones. It is a beautiful card. And the thing to know about the Tops Finest card is that is actually Vladimir Guerrero's first true rookie card in a Tops logo. So that is the first rookie card that he has for Tops. It came out in Tops Finest. So kind of a neat one to have there. For our mid-level card, we're going to go to the first Bowman Chrome, the 2016 Bowman Chrome Prospects card. That is card number BCP55. Raw, right now you can get that card pretty low for Vladimir Guerrero Jr., about 30 to 45 bucks. But if you're looking for PSA and graded, in a nine, you're going to be looking at about 75 to 100. And in a 10, you're right in that 300, that low $300 range, high $200 range. And my high level card is is going to be the 2019 Topps Chrome Rookie Auto. Raw right now is going for about 160 to 200. In a PSA 9, you're up to 400 to about 450 bucks. And your PSA 10s on that one, gonna be a pretty penny, about 570 to 650. Now those are actually down from where he was in 2019. So if he can have that great season that everyone has been anticipating now for the for the first two years, those cards, I believe, could go up in value really fast. So who is our third player on the list? It is Mr. Carlos Correa of the Astros. Now, this is one of the more interesting picks when you dig into the numbers. What are the three reasons to believe? One thing about Carlos Correa, feels like he has been in the league forever, but he is only 26 years old. He also came in really young, was a first round pick, just has had a fantastic trajectory into the major leagues. At the age of 26, he actually has a career war of 26.3, which puts him on a solid trajectory for Hall of Fame chances. Uh, That is right up there with a lot of good names. When you look at similar players over on Baseball Reference, he is similar to the names of like Cal Ripken Jr. good. And at the shortstop position, especially with how starved it is for offensive talent, you you start looking at that at the Hall of Fame and you go, he's actually a great offensive player. So on a very solid trajectory for a Hall of Fame career, and maybe most importantly, this year, He's in a contract year with all the things that have gone on with the Astros, with the trash can and trash can gate and all of that. Um, He becomes an unrestricted free agent for the first time following this season. So he's in his contract year. Anyone that knows investing knows invest in players that are in contract years because they're going to get a ton of hype in the media. And he's got a lot to prove because he's had some health issues in the past. And so he's got to stay healthy this year and he's got to play great to go get that first big contract as an unrestricted free agent. And finally, he did stay healthy last year. Now, granted, a smaller sample size, but health has really been his only hindrance in his career so far. When he's healthy, he is one of the best hitters in the game, one of the best shortstops in the game. So if he stays healthy, gets that big contract, 
has a solid season that follows along with what he has done to date, I believe that Correa could very much be way more valuable than he is right now on the card market. My risk level for Carlos Correa going to be a three out of five. There's a little bit of risk that you're taking because of the health concerns. And there's a little bit of risk that you're taking because of the stigma of the Houston Astros and the 2017 trash can gate. But I believe that you'll see him move to a different team in 2022 and maybe become even more popular on another team than he has been with the Astros. So what are the cards we're going to chase? Our budget option going to be the 2013 Bowman Chrome Prospects card number 100. Keep in mind, he was a first overall pick way back then. Uh, you can get that card raw for $4 to $8 right now. A very inexpensive card. I believe these cards are way undervalued going into the 2021 season based upon the fact that he is on a contract year and everything else. My mid-level card going to be a 2015 Topps Chrome rookie card. And that is actually a short print card, card number 205. Raw, you can get that card for about $15 to $20 right now. And if you're looking for a 9 or 10 PSA grade, the 9 is going to cost you, I'll call it right around $50, $55. Bucks. And then the PSA 10, you're getting into the triple dig, the low triple digits, $100 to $120. And then for our high card, we're going to go back to the 2013 Bowman Chrome. That is the Prospects Auto card number BCPCC. Raw, that card going to be right at around eighty to one hundred and ten dollars. If you're, it's kind of hard to find these in a PSA. There's actually a lot more Beckett graded. So if you're looking for a BGS nine or a PSA nine, those are going to be right around the hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty dollar range. If you're looking for the nine point five, going to get you up to around two hundred. The PSAs are actually pretty rare. The pop is pretty low, but if you can find some of those, they're going to cost you a little bit more. But definitely because of a low population, another card that you might think about buying raw and then sending it in to get it graded. You might not get it back for a year. But hey, let's not talk about PSA in this video. So who's our next player? Well, we're going to go to the two-way phenom, Mr. Shohei Otani of my favorite team, the Los Angeles Angels. He's a designated hitter slash pitcher. And Shohei obviously has a ton of hype around him. But let me give you three reasons to believe for the 2021 season. First and foremost, I follow the Angels a lot. He has come in to the 2021 season finally healthy. He was not healthy last year when he got injured. In 2018, he really hasn't been healthy since injury that forced him to get Tommy John. So he is back healthy and actually looks fantastic this spring. And another thing. Surprisingly, it feels like we've been talking about Shohei forever, but he is also entering his prime. He's going into his age 26, 27 season, and in spring training, he has looked phenomenal, hitting 100 miles per hour on the radar gun. He already has like a 464-foot home run to dead center over the batter's eye wall and has looked really, really good and has been impressing. And all of the coaches have been saying that he has been working out hard throughout the offseason. So I believe that he has put in the time to really make this thing work. And finally, the Angels are committed to his two-way player status. Now, why is that important? What makes him popular is the fact that he is pitching and he is hitting. Now, health obviously going to be a concern here. Is the two-way stuff really going to work? That remains to be seen. So my risk level on Shohei, I think you take a high risk with Shohei because this will be the season where we either say, well, he really took off this season or B, the two-way stuff isn't working and he can't stay healthy. So if you believe that Shohei can actually pull off a full season of pitching and hitting. There are some projections out there that project him with a war of somewhere between 15 to 20, which would be absolutely insane. He would lead the league in war without a doubt 
when you add pitching and the hitting and the defense that would come along with the pitching. It would be amazing if he pulls that off. And if he does, he will be one of the hottest cards in the hobby. He's already heating up in the hobby because a lot of people are already jumping on this bandwagon. But if you jump on early and he actually stays healthy all season and finds success on both sides of the ball, by the end of this season, his cards, if you remember back to 2018, his cards are a lightning rod for investors and could really see a bump in value throughout the 2021 season. And finally, we have the chase cards for Shohei. My first one is going to be the 2018 Topps Chrome card number 150. Right now, and these prices have been moving a lot in the last couple of days. So these prices may actually be a little bit low. But raw, raw, raw when I was doing my research, you were at about $8 to $12. Our mid-level card is going to be the 2018 Top Series 2 short print image variation. That is card number 700. In raw, you can get that card for around 40 to 70 bucks right now. A PSA going to cost you right, right around $100. And the PSA 10 has a pretty good multiplier on it over the PSA 9 right now. That is at 180 to all the way up to like 275 So expect to pay somewhere in the mid, uh, the low to mid 200s for that card probably at this point. But a fantastic looking card. Obviously the short print image variations, very popular in the hobby. And if you want to go all in on Shohei, the card you want to be looking at is the 2018 Bowman Chrome Auto, C-R-A-S-O, raw, that card, going to cost you at 350 to 450 bucks. Your PSA 9, about 600 to $800, and your PSA 10, expect to pay maybe four figures for that, 850 to around 1200 bucks for that in a PSA 10, but it is a beautiful auto. Obviously, a huge card for any collector would be a centerpiece of most people's collections. But with Shohei, that card does have the potential to be worth even more. We're looking at health and we are looking at success on both sides of the ball. If he can pitch marginally well and be a factor for wins for the Angels along with with hitting some bombs and hitting for a decent average and creating some positive war on the offensive side of the ball, Shohei will be one of the stories of 2021. Obviously a lot of risk there, but if it happens, it will be to a baseball card investor's delight. And finally, we have Mr. Manny Machado, obviously playing for the Slam Diego Padres. He's their third baseman, plays a little bit of shortstop, but you're going to see him over at third base for the most part. And the three reasons to believe for Mr. Manny Machado. Well, in 2020, he had his best statistical year of his career. He had highs in his average, his on-base percentage, his slugging, and OPS. Um, he has never had a better statistical season than what he had in 2020. The other thing to remember, the Padres, they loaded up big time in the offseason, and they are an odds-on favorite to make the playoffs, even being in the same division with the Dodgers. The Dodgers probably still the better team, but the Padres are a fantastic team, and Fangraphs gives them a 93% chance of making the playoffs this year. Why is that important? Well, with a team with the media hype around the Padres, what you'll find is Fernando Tatis Jr. gets a lot of that media attention, but their best player is Manny Machado at this point. Fernando will get there at some point, but he is still developing. Uh, but Manny Machado will be the heart and soul of that team, the veteran leadership of that team. And he is the one that will put that team on his back. And he actually was like third in MVP voting last year, and he came real close to winning it. And finally, you also have to understand another thing about Manny. Yes, he came into the, uh, the league a long time ago, uh, but he is still in the middle of his prime. He's 28, 29-year-old season, and he is well on a pace for a Hall of Fame career. When you go look at all of the Hall of Fame probabilities, he's above 50% to make the Hall of Fame. So as a long-term investment, if he ends up making the Hall of Fame, that is what you're looking for. And basically every card that you invest in is what, you know, what is the long-term success? So 
well on his way. The trajectory is there. And my belief is that Manny Machado is the next Mookie Betts story where he's on a new team. He's on a new coast, brings his team to the playoffs, has playoff success, does really well in those. If we look at what happened to Mookie Betts in 2020, which side note, I said before the 2020 season, Mookie Betts would be a very good investment and his cards like went berserk in 2020. I believe that Manny Machado may be on that same trajectory. So my risk level, the lowest one of all of the players that I have put into this list, my risk level for him is going to be a two out of five. So what are the cards we're looking to chase for with Manny Machado? Well, first of all, your budget option going to be the 2010 Bowman Draft Chrome. And that card you can get raw right now for $9 to $13. Now, you may ask yourself, why is it so low? If you remember back three, four, I think it was about three or four years ago when Manny Machado played for the Dodgers and he said that he wouldn't hustle. There are some people out there in the game that do not like Manny Machado's attitude. But I am of the belief that winning cures all ails. And if he goes on and takes the team to the playoffs and they have a lot of playoff success, possibly make a World Series or defeat the Dodgers in a playoff series, something like that. And Manny Machado is one of the reasons why they go. All of the stuff about him not hustling and what he said a few years back, um, all of that stuff will go by the wayside. So the Bowman Draft Chrome card. Get it for as low as $9 to $13 right now. If you're looking for a very cool mid-level card, look no further than the 2013 Topps Turkey Red Rookie Card Number 6. Now, that was an online exclusive set that was sold from Topps back in 2013. One of the most rare Manny Machado rookie cards that you can find. Um, they do not pop up on eBay all that often, and when they do, they are snatched up, but you can still get them for a fairly reasonable price. Raw, you're going to be paying around $40, 35 45 bucks, something like that. And if you're looking for some of the graded ones, the 9 is going to be around 125 to 150 bucks, and the PSA 10 is going to be around 250 to 300 But a very cool card, one of the neatest cards that I have on this list. And if you can get one of those, just a very nice talking piece for anyone's collection. And if you're looking to flip it, I, that's one that I might actually hold for the PC. And finally, if you're looking for a high-range card, look at the 2014 Bowman Chrome Refractor Auto. I don't know why it says 2014 there. It should, it should say 2010. It's a typo in my in my presentation. However, it's the 2010 Bowman Chrome Refractor Auto, the BDPP80. It is numbered to 500. Keep in mind, it's the refractor. So in 2010, the refractors were numbered to 500. If you're looking to get that card raw, it's going to cost you a pretty penny right off the bat. 350 to 450 bucks. In a nine, you're up at 650 to 800. And in a beautiful, perfect gem mint 10, Look at a 950 to 1100 bucks. So those are my five players that I am going to really be looking at in 2021. Watch the players' performances. And as you see those cards starting to increase, pick your time to sell. One thing that I will always advise any sort of investor is always remember one thing. Pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. So you also want to know the right time to sell. So don't wait for that card to keep going up and up and up. If you think that you have made enough money on the investment, that is the time to sell. Get bad on that investment. Go buy your next investment card and good luck in all of your investing. Now, if you like this video, remember to go hit thumbs up. If you hate all of my advice, be sure to let me know in the comments below or be kind and let me know if you like some of this advice and let me know what you think are going to be the good players to invest in in the 2021 card season. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification so you can be the first one to get the card investing advice. And until next time, I hope that all of you are having great luck on your personal pack rips. And I hope that you all are being good to your family, to your friends and to your neighbors. And Happy investing. Enjoy the 2021 baseball card season. Take care.